Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with a full case break of 2020 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition 12 box pick your team number Jordan. All cards ship. A lot of great stuff in here. So let's get going. Big thank you to everybody here who got into the action. Big Boys 007, David ended up with the last spot mojo star next to his name with the Diamondbacks. He grabbed the snakes before uh, they were before the remaining teams were pulled for a filler. If you got a rooftop next to your name, that means you won that team in a filler. And everyone, everyone's name on this list, you're also part of the uh, the uh, Black Friday Cyber Monday promo. Pop open this case. So there's four, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. 12 boxes. Each box has two mini boxes. Slide these over a little bit. And each mini box has an autograph. Good luck, everyone. A lot, uh, lot of baseball action happening. Today's Monday the 29th, and there's just been a lot of things happening in Major League Baseball. The Rangers signing Corey Seager for a zillion dollars after they signed uh, Marcus Simeon for a little under a zillion dollars. Now, Corey Seager got 10 years, 325 no opt-outs, apparently, and limited no-trade protection. That's wild. And that's just a day after they picked up Marcus Simeon on a seven-year, $175 million deal yesterday. So it's quite, a, quite an infield that they got. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly what's happening, Joe P. A lot of, lot of teams, a lot of players, and a lot of teams trying to get deals done before the collective bargaining agreement expires. Well, in a couple days, I think, December 1st. And once that expires, there's there's a freeze on everything. Transactions, signings, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, can't even talk about it. Can't talk to teams about it. So a lot of, a lot of players trying to get deals done now. So there may be a more flurry of orders by the time we wake up tomorrow. I have to admit, I did not expect the Rangers to really make these two big moves. And uh, and the and the Mets picking up Max Scherzer for an average annual value of like $40 million a year, that was surprising as well. Did not expect that. I think Chris Bryant, though, is one of those players that are saying that that he might wait until afterwards. There's Franiel Baez, 242 out of 250. Purple Chrome, last spot mojo, strikes again. Big Boys 007. Two forty two out of two fifty. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break. Yeah, there's Scherzer right there. Three years, one thirty, I think. There's Ian Anderson, refractor to four ninety nine. There's Luis Medina, Bowman first, Shimmer. It's for the Brew Crew. 
And there's Malfren Sosa. Twins. That's for Taylor and the Twins. And I guess Malfren's future teammate, Byron Buxton, signing a big deal as well. Big seven-year extension. There's Shohei Otani, your AL MVP to 299. That's for the Halos. That's going to go to Brian Crouch. All right, next box. What else is happening here? Brave signed Kirby Yates. Giants finalizing agreement with Alex Cobb. MLB reportedly proposing a 14-team playoff. In collective bargaining negotiations. It seems like a lot, doesn't it? Mariner signed Robbie Ray, which I thought was a solid deal. But for almost the same amount of money as what the Blue Jays paid, paid Kevin Gossman. So we were speculating earlier today that maybe maybe Robbie Ray just didn't didn't enjoy his didn't want to live in uh, in Toronto. Nick Costano is looking for a seven or eight year deal, according to MLBTradeRumors.com. Marlins agreed to an extension with Sandy Alcantara. Rangers also got John Gray. I think John Gray might might do okay out of Colorado, outside of Colorado. So that still leaves Chris Bryant still out there. Carlos Correa is probably is another big name. Now that the Corey Seager domino has dropped. I'm sure Carlos Correa is gonna be looking for some big time money as well. In the next box, when I rip open the next box, we'll look at the uh, some of the details on that 14 team playoff. We got Brian Reynolds, seven out of seventy-five. It's for the Pirates. That's going to go to Will Hash and the Buckos. And we got Johendrick Penango for the Cubbies. Greg with the Cubs. There's Julio Rodriguez for the Mariners. That'll be for Aaron and the M's. We got a Nick York. Uh, yellow shimmer, gold shimmer, 9 out of 50. That's for Boston. Josh with the Red Sox. And a Yiddy Cap, 70. Out of four ninety nine refractor autograph for Carl and the Fish. There's Milcar Perez speckled to two ninety nine for the M's. Aaron. Andre Franco signed a big extension too. So he got his money locked in early in the career. In his career, goes through all the arbitration years, so on and so forth. All right, next box. What do we think about this? 14 team playoff field? Major League Baseball, because according to MLBTradeRumors.com, has proposed expanding the postseason field to 14 teams. In collective bargaining discussions with the Player Association, reports Jesse Rogers of ESPN. It's hardly a surprise as Commissioner Rob Manfred has publicly advocated for expanding the playoffs, reportedly preferring a 14-team setup going back to last year when the, MLB, when, uh, the league and the MLBPA agreed to a 16-team playoff during the shortened 2020 season. Under the proposed format, the top seed in the league would receive a bye, as is the case with the NFL structure. However... Rogers adds, the writer adds that the MLB's proposal will would allow 
the other two division winners in each league could choose which wildcard team they'd prefer in, to face in the first round, which would take the form of a three-game series. The division winner with the second-best record in each league would have its pick of any of the other four wildcard clubs in its league. The final division winner would pick to face one of the other three wildcard teams. The two wildcard teams remaining would face one another. Oh, I remember that idea. I didn't like that idea. The whole picking and choosing of teams. I feel like you do have to do some sort of seeding and stuff like that. But, but yeah. It kind of does feel like that, right? It's like Little League where everyone gets a trophy, Jonathan's saying. 14 teams, that's a lot. How, what is it usually? It's just... I guess it's already at like... I don't know. How many teams beat the playoffs now? I feel like... So it's like, what, three teams plus wild cards? So I guess one, two, three, four, five... So right now it's 10. So I guess 10 to 14, I guess that's not horrible, but but I, I, I just don't like the, I don't know, does anyone, do people like that? You think that'd be fun? People selecting which team they're, they want to face? Here's a redemption, congratulations, someone. You do to receive a prospect autograph. N? New York? New York Yankees? New York Mets? Yankees. Alexander Vizcaino. Yankees redemption going to Brian. And the Bronx Bombers. There's Kay Cavalli to four ninety nine for the Nats, Steve Birch. And Pablo Abreu is your Brewers autograph. That'll be for Cody. And that's with a with a spot that Cody won in our filler. And there's Andrew Bogarts to two ninety nine. All right, onwards to the next box. So moving on with that story, the the league has been long been expected to prior, prioritize an expanded playoff and collective bargaining talk. An increased number of postseason games comes with an associated uptick in gate and TV revenue and obvious appeal, which is an obvious appeal for ownership groups. The effects for players could be more mixed. While some players could stand to benefit from increased playoff shares, the ESPN writer Rogers noted that the MLBPA Players Association concerned that an expanded playoff field could reduce the incentive for teams to aggressively try to bolster their roster. A broader playoff field increases everyone's odds of getting into the postseason, and front office may find the greater odds a disincentive to upgrading the roster via free agency or trade. Small sample postseason series have an inherent high level of randomness. Seems that the fear among some on the players' side is that teams could be satisfied to build a slightly above average roster, which would stand a much greater chance of making the postseason the 14 team field instead of the current 10 system and hope that a hot streak can carry them deep into the playoffs. On the other hand, Major League Baseball, on the other hand, contends well, with the first round bye, that would be a significant advantage to the team with the best record in each league, so there will still be motivation to chase that. Rogers noted that the expanded playoff proposal has been on the table for months, but he reports the MLB recently put forward a new suggestion, a lottery for the top three amateur draft choices, rather than setting up the draft order as the inverse of the league standings. 
Interesting, as is the current setup. This proposal will introduce a weighted system that injects more randomness into the process. Process Teams with the worst records would still have a greater chance of higher picks. Kind of like basketball, I guess. All right. We'll keep going with the article in the next box. There's Christian Santana. It's Bowman first. Shimmer. It'll be for the Tigers. That'll be for the White. That one. And Angel Rondon for the Cardinals. Your first autograph out of this box. Mark with that one. Tristan McKenzie to 499. That'll be for Jordan and the Tribe. He had a pretty nice season last year. And there's Luis Rodriguez. Nice speckle auto. 192 out of 299 for the Dodgers. Matthew Sharaf picking up my boys in blue. Straight up. You're my boy, blue. There you go. Top Venezuelan prospect in the 2019 international signing class. Those are your two autos. See any numbered parallels here? Alexander Vizcaino to 499. Logan Gilbert back there. Another Yankee for Brian. All right, next box. Jeff Passan over at ESPN shed some further light on CBA talks this afternoon. Passan reports that the league recently offered a slight raise over the luxury tax threshold set in the 2016 to 2021 CBA collective bargaining agreement. That is a turnaround from the league's earlier efforts to tie a lowered tax threshold to a soft salary floor, an offer that the Players Association rejected. It's not how clear high, how high the league's willing to set the thresholds, though, and past nats that the league's willingness to raise them might come with associated stiffer penalties for exceeding them. Unsurprisingly, the MLBPA expressed concerns that a counterbalance uh, that or express concern that would counterbalance high spending teams willing to surpass those thresholds, which is why I think you're gonna you're seeing a lot of players getting big contracts locked in now before it gets more expensive to do so. MLB expressed openness to a minimal bump on the league minimum salary, which sat at five hundred and seventy thousand in 2021. MLB's offer to include the introduction of the designated here to the National League. Uh, and uh, as an on-field alteration widely expected to ultimately be put into place. So I guess that's set. All right, onwards. And we got an orange Mike Trout. That's pretty nice. Three out of 25 for MT27. That'll be for Brian Crouch and the Angels. Nice, that looks really sharp. Nice, nice jaspy orange right there. Here's your auto, Matt Scheffler for the M's. That's going to go to Aaron and the Mariners. There's Po Yu Chen to 199 for the Pirates. That's going to go to Will. Max Meyer to 199. 
All right, there it is. One ninety nine magenta shimmer for the Marlins. That'll be for Carl. And we've got an autograph for the White Sox, Luis Mieses. For John Samuelson and the Chicago White Sox. Here you go, John, on the board. We have Luis Patino to 150, the Tampa Bay Rays. And that will go to Ken. All right, next box. So the current CBA expires on Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. East Coast time. So 9 a.m. in L.A., high noon on the East Coast. It's widely expected that the league will lock out the players if no deal is agreed, agreed upon at that point, a move that would come with an accompanying freeze on major league transactions. Players who were not on a major league roster last season could still sign minor league contracts with clubs. John Heyman of the MLB Network tweeted that while there's been incremental process between the two sides as of late, there's basically no hope of getting the deal done in the next 48 hours. The reality has been reflected in a flurry of free agent activity we've seen in the recent days. So yeah, crazy stuff. Hopefully, you know, that lockout won't, won't last too long. Hopefully we won't lose any. Uh, hopefully we won't lose any. Meaningful, uh, meaningful games. trying to wrap my head around like uh, how all the wild card and the and the choosing of the wild card teams and all that stuff is going to go let's try to run it through last year's sandings once I'm done with this box there's an Eduardo Garcia atomic parallel 78 out of 100 for the Brewers Cody with the Brewers There's Eugenio Suarez to 499. That'll be for the Red Legs. Robert Rohr with that. About Wander Franco. And we got a Tyler Keenan. That's for Aaron and the M's. And there's a Kiebert Ruiz, 159 out of 250, still Dodgers edition here, purple parallel for Matthew. All right, halfway through. This full case break, we've got about another 25 minutes or so to go. All right, so let's try to figure this out. In the, under the proposed new playoff format, Top seed in each league would receive a bye 
So I guess in the case of in the case of the National League, San Francisco, who won 107 games, would get a bye. In the NL. Then the other two division winners in each league get to choose their wild card. So there would be... So the Brewers would be able to pick first because they had the second best record or they're a division winner. And the better record over the other division winner, they had 95 wins to the Braves' 88 wins. So the Brewers can choose one of the four wild card teams, which would be Dodgers, Cardinals, Reds, Phillies, I guess, in this scenario. Because that would be seven teams. So seven in the NL, seven in the AL. So, for example, the Brewers would choose... I don't know who they'd want to choose. Maybe the Brewers choose Philadelphia. Because they only have, you know, they're the, I guess, the worst of the wild card teams in this new scenario with 82 games, 82 wins. Then the Braves get to choose their opponent. So maybe the Braves choose Cincinnati, who won 83 games if they chose to go with it like that, which would leave the Dodgers Cardinals as the other two remaining wild cards that would face each other. That's the proposed idea. I guess people can go... I guess the Cubs could go nuts and they'd be like, yeah, we're going to take St. Louis. You know, maybe they think, hey, we see them a lot. We match up well with them. Maybe there's a scenario where that would happen. Husky Dolphin, what's going on? There's Kyle Hurt. For Carl and the Marlins. Not sure if I... I don't know. Do we like that? There's Sixto Sanchez. In the uh, in the AL, the Tampa Bay Rays would get the bye, and then the wild card teams involved would be Boston, New York, Toronto, Seattle. There's Bobby Witt Jr. to 249. He should be a pretty big name next year. Carl with the Royals should see his rookie cards next year. And Carson Taylor. Dodgers auto going to Matthew Shira. And that's our one per case Bowman and Sensions insert. Yoelki Cespedes, Yoenis' half brother, I believe. John Samuelson with that one. Nice. So once again, in that in the proposed 14-team playoff scenario, in each league, teams with the best record in the division or in their yeah in their in the league, the American or National League, will get a bye, and the other division winners get to choose their opponents. Do we like that? Houston, I suppose, could choose Seattle. White Sox would then was a division where and they choose maybe someone else and then the other two remaining wild card teams would play each other. It's interesting. Well, how would they do? Would it would it be would it be? I mean, they should televise it, right? If you're going to go that far.
should be a big televised event where like the GM of each team would fly to New York and make an hour long special out of it. We got Helcris Olivares, 61 out of 75. That'll be for the Rockies, Jorge, the Rocks. Oh, and a redemption. Nolan Gorman to 299. Behind Jose Abreu. Someone is due to receive a refractor parallel. S, San Diego, Seattle. It's T, St. Louis. Malcolm Nunez for the Cardinals. That's going to go to Mark and the Redbirds. Manuel Rodriguez to 250. Purple Shimmer. Twins. It'll be Twins for Taylor. And there's your other autograph. There's Rafael Morel. Greg with the Cubbies. Miguel Amaya for the Cubs. Refractor to 499. And onwards to the next box. All right, Bam's thinking it smells like a way to just keep getting the Yankees in the playoffs all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, the Yankees already made the play, but I guess, yeah, I mean, you're, you're giving, you're pretty much adding two extra teams to the playoffs. So this year, Toronto and Seattle would have made it into the playoffs. And then the uh, Reds and the Phillies would have made it into the playoffs. Makes the World Series. World, I mean, I feel like ML Major League Baseball playoffs are already hard enough, are already difficult enough in terms of the major sports to to win. There's just so much variance that can happen in the course of a baseball series. So now you're adding more variables by adding more teams. It could be crazy. We got a Chi Jung Lu, 130 out of 150. Red Sox auto going to Josh Smith. Taylor Trammell to 499. Refractor for the M's. Mariners, that'll be for Aaron. Edbert Perez. And there's, with a thick blue pen, Gabriel Maciel.
trying to see the G there. I see the M. It looks kind of like a W, but I can see where that would be an M. G? Unless you're going with the uppercase cursive G. You just kind of didn't finish off the tail. All right, I'll give it that. Taylor with the twins. There's Christian Yelich, 299. All right, final three boxes coming up. any other orders coming in so it looks like we'll be running that uh i did promise that if that that basketball that last basketball mixer filler pack sold out i would do both the pack and the mixer it looks like no one no takers on that the last order i got was uh was for will finishing off the uh, filler so after this um i'll add everyone's names from that list right there into the the master list for the promo and we'll run the randomizer and see who wins all those delightful prizes as part of our Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend special. So from Friday through Monday. So big thanks uh, to everybody who helped us, uh, who helped us out, who got into all of the fun breaks that we had created for this promo. Good luck. Got Needy Cap, 25 out of 99. And George Felice uh, for Aaron and the M's. We got a Malvin Valdez to two ninety nine speckle, double oh seven out of two ninety nine. Do do purple shimmer to two fifty. And there's Aldo Ramirez for the Red Sox. That's going to go to Josh. Everyone see the uh, the uh, the final Daniel Craig James Bond movie? I did. Saw it in the theaters. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. Had a good time. Asa Lacy to 150 Atomic Refractor for the Royals. Two boxes go, four autographs left. Good luck, everybody.
Manuel Beltre, 8 out of 75 for Toronto. That'll be for John Samuelson. Carlos Rodriguez, 211 out of 499. Refractor autograph for Cody and the Brew Crew. Christian Robinson to 150, blue for Big Boys 007, David and the Snakes. It's Joey Bart. Jordan Walker to 199. Not yet, Joe P. Not yet. And. Josh using the black ink, Josh Winkowski going with the black ink. It goes to Josh and the Red Sox. Josh W for Josh S. Joe, you're, you're not really staying up for the promo, are you? There's Luis Medina to 499. Go to bed, Joe. You know you're not going to win. You've already put that out in the universe. You never win. Jaspies hates you. Blah, 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 blah. So then, uh, it's just going to be sadness, Joe P. And you said it yourself. If you win the fifteen hundred, you're buying out a break for me to stay. I'll be sending that break credit out after I go off air. Final box, we made it. Last two autographs, good luck everybody. There's Casey Mize, I think that's a variation. If it's a refractor but not numbered, I think that's a variation. Me not be the Debbie Downer. I'm just, I'm just saying what you say to me. You're the Debbie Downer, Joe P, you're the Eeyore. I'm never gonna win. 167 out of uh, 250, Eduardo Garcia. I buy into all these breaks. I never win. Never win anything here. Just donating my money. There's Patrick Bailey to two. Of course, <laughs> Joe's a Suns fan. He's, of course he's going to say yes. Joe, what's the, what's, the, uh, what's the spread on that game? There's Milcar Perez. That's our last autograph for Aaron Tooley and the Mariners. Yeah, that should be a good game. That will be a good one for all of us to watch together. Warriors Suns, ladies and gentlemen. Suns started off the season great. Or Warriors start out the season's great. Suns have rattled off a ton of games in a row. There's Alec Thomas to 299. And so now there should be a, a good good old TNT showdown. Joe P. Suns against the Golden State Warriors. All right. Recap. Pretty solid break. Thanks everyone for getting in. And of course, you get a shot. That orange Mike Trout was pretty cool. You get a shot at uh, those big Black Friday 
Cyber Monday prizes. So that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, oh, my Phoenix minus two and a half. Wow. All right. Thanks, everybody. Well, well, we'll talk about the hoops tomorrow. We'll break some more baseball later as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one.